Well, hey there, everyone. Welcome to First Things First. My name's Jenna Wolf. That's the Hall of Famer, Chris Carter. This guy is Nick. This guy is Nick. It's, you should have um, known better, Jenna. You tried to hand me a non-sharpie writing utensil. What is happening on the set? There is too much paper. I can't use paper. anything There's but too these. much information. How is everybody? Good. Very good. Yeah? Good I feel so much better than yesterday. Mark. Wait, why? Yeah, yesterday was weird. It was our first... Yes, Monday was the first day we ever have had off I know. since the show began. Felt weird. And so it was weird getting back into it. I felt like yesterday, just yesterday it just felt, it was one of those days a little in a fog. Today is totally different. It, Santa Claus, the day after Christmas, he tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it just, I mean, I was just tired. Yeah, you were tired? <laughs> Absolutely. It, it, just tired, but it, okay. it, I feel I'm back to normal today. Absolutely. What you guys need to do after the show, come with me, go to the gym, knock out an amazing workout, Didn't have like some breakfast. <laughs> And it'll be great. Do you know I'm older than James Harrison? <laughs> yes. One of the things people don't often think about when they are up and moving quickly, address to address, is how fast they can get those new address labels for holiday cards. And I'm sure that's exactly what James Harrison is worried about right now. On Saturday, James Harrison got cut by the Steelers. On Tuesday, James Harrison got picked up by the Patriots. Pittsburgh to New England, new team, new town, and yes, new address labels. The 39-year-old linebacker is a two-time Super Bowl winner who can hip thrust about 1,000 pounds. That's right, true Nick? story. Yeah, I saw the videos. Story. CC, does signing Harrison give the Patriots an edge if they face Pittsburgh now in the playoffs? And if so, how big of an edge? Well, this is the thing. When you acquire, um, it, it would kind of be like this. All right, let's hear it. If we had a show that we were competing against, and they had someone who worked there for a long time and was a star. And then all of a sudden, we decided to bring them over here to work with us. Now, we would have to try to, how do we pull the information and get it on the air that might help us be a better show than the previous show? Without looking but, like we're trying to do that. Yeah, but the truth of the matter is, if the person's not talented, if they can't fit a role or a void that, that, that we have, how much use is the person, even though they've been over there for a long time? So my, my, my theory is with James Harrison, he knows a lot about the Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay. But is he a better player or a better option than what New England is presenting to the NFL now? And he really is. New England's outside linebackers are some of the worst all-outside linebackers I've seen with the Bill Belichick defense. I think I, I tweeted a couple weeks ago, this is the worst. I've never seen so many people run around the edge. It was the, during the Steelers game. Yeah. It was like he Bell. Now, if you ask what can, with that thousand-pound hip thrust, James Harrison, if you put him on the outside, you will not get outside of him. So I do believe it's not necessarily the information he has about the Steelers, it's about what can he do at 39 that would enhance this New England defense that is lack of overall talent, lack of overall speed, lack of ability to dictate to the defense. Now, James is very, very fortunate that he's played most of his career in a 34 front. So all the different variations that Belichick likes to run of a 34 front, James is pretty much going to know those things. So if I'm getting in a one-game single, elimina single elimination playoff system, I want James Harrison on my team. And I know he's better than what they're offering. So I think it's a good signing. Um, how much football can he play? I believe he can play about 20 to 30 snaps a game. He's only played 40 snaps in this season, and he's 39 years old. So I do believe in a spot duty, he can help out New England, especially with their lack of being able to, to control the edge of the defense. All right, so a few things. One is, just from a pure football perspective, one thing CC left out is if Harrison's going to play outside, it does allow for the Patriots' Kyle Van Noy to kick back inside. They had a guy who's a decent inside Good linebacker point, yes. playing on the outside because their outside linebackers are so bad. Yes. So potentially, maybe you've upgraded inside and, and outside. outside. At the same time. I, CC's the first person, though, I've heard discuss this about football. Everyone's talked about that. I should say, on the field football. Everyone's talked about James Harrison in the meeting room. James Harrison knowing the Patriots or the Steelers' secrets. Yeah, the James Harrison knowing what they're going to do. For his position, I don't buy into that. 
and here as, as far as that being able to help the other players on the on the New England Patriots in the meeting room I it's hard for me to believe that there is, if they were to play in the postseason, after having the Steelers will have played 17 games this year, the whole Roethlisberger Tomlin career, and how smart the Patriots staff is, that the Pats, that this, Harrison's going to be able to tell them something that Bill Belichick doesn't already know. Mm -hmm. On the field, he's not the one wearing the headset. He's not the one that I would think is going to be communicating player to player on defense pre-snap, here's what they're doing. So I think the off-the-field stuff is slightly overblown, and if it wasn't, then guess what? Harrison had to pass through waivers. There are te the Jags, who are more likely to place the, the play the Steelers in the playoffs, could have picked him up. One of the the Titans could have picked him up. The Jags, the Jags have outstanding linebackers, though. They got a lot of speed. But if it was just for the meeting room part, I'm talking yes, about not okay, even on yeah, the good field. Point. Yes, if you absolutely. just wanted a yes. guy who yes. wasn't even going to be active on game day, yeah. just to get him in the meeting room, it would have cost you $75,000. Any team in the league could have picked him up, including the Pats. He passed through waivers. The Pats then brought him in and signed him. So I just, I, I think the off the field stuff's overblown. On the field, is he an upgrade? I mean, the guy has a tackle in one game this year. He's played 40 snaps this year. Maybe he's been saving it for the end. He seemed frustrated he wasn't playing. He mm -hmm. said, if I knew I wasn't playing, I wouldn't have signed there. So he clearly thinks he has something left. I do wonder if this is a bigger name, though, than impact at this point in his career. Isn't this so typical Patriots? Like, this is what they do. They'll take a guy that someone else doesn't want. They'll take anything to find an edge, whether mm -hmm. the edge works out or not. So maybe he knows one thing. Maybe there's something. There's an element of the mood, the culture, mm -hmm. anything that could tip the Patriots a certain way. But my question to you, CeCe, then would be, would the Patriots have picked him up realistically? Would the Patriots have picked him up if he didn't come from the Steelers? If he came from another team that released him, would the Patriots have be so quick to make sure they get him? If he's a veteran player, I mean, they, they pick up the Browns players. They pick up Buffalo's players. So Bill Belichick, it's just not a matter of the rivalry. You know, it's a matter of what can this guy do and what kind of information he can present. So I believe that you're right. I believe that he will make a tremendous contribution because if he's, if he's there in the AFC championship game, in Gillette against the Pittsburgh Steelers, let me tell you guys what he does know. The right tackle, Marcus Gilbert, he's been going against him since he's been in the league. And there is no doubt that James Harris thinks in that situation he can dominate Marcus, Gil Marcus Gilbert. The left tackle, you remember earlier in the season when they had the controversy about the protest? Yep. You remember? Alejandro Villanueva. Villanueva wanted to go out to represent because he's uh, because of his past. He's a service member, okay. yeah, and, and he deserved that right. But it caused a lot of controversy in that locker room. You know who James Harris has been going against in practice? Villanueva. You know who he'd see in the AFC Championship game? Villanueva. You know who don't want to see James Harris? That's Marcus Gilbert and Villanueva. They do not because they know him. And if I was a player... I wouldn't want to go against a guy who's a legendary player going against him in a championship atmosphere for 50 snaps. Yes, I know he made one tackle, but his overall wisdom and knowledge of the game and his power, like, that's where he'll make a difference. And that is the reason why I believe Bill Belichick signed him was for that game, the AFC championship game against that right tackle and against that left tackle. I I think that's, you're absolutely right. That's why Bill Belichick signed him. I just want to talk about this from the other side of it for a moment. So why would the Steelers release him? Because the Steelers, it's not, it, the moment James Harrison got released, dopes like me on Twitter were speculating, oh, the Pats will probably claim him for the AFC Championship game. Everyone thought the Pats will probably claim him. People were surprised when the Pats didn't immediately claim him and then waited to sign him. The Steelers had to know, the Steelers, more than any team in the league, have been focused on the Pats this year. The Steelers know the Pats linebacking mm -hmm. situation. The Steelers just ran successfully on the Pats. So why would the Steelers release him 
knowing that this is a possibility, unless they thought he cannot be a productive player at all. Or does this have the feel of something? Is there under? Is oh, if he's a double agent. Of, that, that's my this favorite is, theory. This is I was theory. gonna, I was gonna Go save ahead. that for Coach Mangini. That they, they sent him there Love as a it. double agent. They're like, listen, we know New England's going to pick you up. You're going to tell them when <laughs> Roethlisberger says banana Y2, it means this, it means that. But I was going to save that for Coach Mangini. So save the double agent stuff for now. But let me. But why would the Steelers do it? Like if they. The churning of the last four or five roster spots, especially at playoff time, if you get a lineman hurt, you need an extra defensive back, which they did. They had a lineman that was suspended. Yep. They also need an extra defensive back for Joe Hayden. So sometimes you have to make that calculated risk and put a guy on waivers where potentially you might not get him back. And that's what happened here as far as the Steelers. I believe their, their cutting him was legitimate because they needed the roster spot. Also, Bill Belichick. Man, he always wants to interview you, Jenna, and sit down and talk to you in person. So he wanted to know of James Harrison, how much football you want to play. He'll tap into you. Typically, he won't claim you off waivers. He wants to sit down, and talk to you, and then he signs you, which they did with James. Well, you mentioned it, Nick. Coach uh, Eric Mangini is going to be out here, and we'll talk more about this with yep. him. We'll switch gears ever so slightly on the other side. Coming up, is Jerry Jones making the right call, sticking with the head coach, Jason Garrett? Talk about it next on First Things First. Yeah, bring that to